that all set? I think so. I hope so. Do we have anybody listening out there? Oh, hi, it's Dr. Wallace. I was just going to listen to uh, Leah's presentation. Great. And just check it to see if there's somebody tuned in. Jane Campbell's here too. Hi, Jane. Hi. Green so Mountain Access recording for posterity. Thank you. We'll call the meeting to order at six o'clock. First on the agenda, are there any changes for our additions, Dan? No changes. Next, approve the minutes. The minutes of June 1st, 2020. I have a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. I think we need to add Gloria's name if she was there. The copy, yes. And she's listed in the copy trust, but not in who was here at the meeting. Does that need to be well, added? she's on the board anyway. She's on the copy trust board. But yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Do you do that, Erica? Do you usually put the members present on there? For that? So we'll make that adjustment. Is there any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. <clears throat> Next, community concerns. Do any community concerns tonight? Hearing none, do we have any liquor control tonight? No liquor control. <clears throat> Next, we'll move into new business. Number one, discuss joining communication union district. Is that you, Dan? No. Uh, oh, Leah, okay. And that's, uh, I, I sort of, this is Jane, I sort of started this. Um, as I said in the memo that I think you all got, there is a group of towns working to form a communication union district. Uh, to be able to put broadband in our area and and Morristown was not in in the group so I sort of stuck my toe in the water um, and am trying to make it so that if this does come to pass Morrisville can be part of it um, there's legislation the original legislation said that a town meeting needed to be held for a town to uh, join a communication union district and there's legislation currently in the Senate it's passed the House, it's in the second reading of the Senate, as I understand it, so it's very close to passing, that would allow select boards to instead approve a town joining a communication union district. Um, there's no, as, as you probably saw in my memo, there's no liability to the town, it's just the communication union district becomes a separate entity. And uh, I just wanted to give you a heads up that if that legislation does pass, I'd like to come back to the select board and um, ask for Morristown to be given approval to join the, the communication union district. And then uh, we asked Leah and Tasha to, to join the meeting tonight so that if you have questions beyond, I kept my memo pretty brief. So if you have questions beyond the memo, we could answer your questions um, just because they know a lot more than I do. Yeah. I was curious uh, pros and cons and what exactly it does um, there is one that the first one that started up after the legislation passed a couple years ago is EC fiber down in south uh, I think it's East Central Vermont and um, what these communication union districts do is they enable the region to get better far better broadband coverage and typically faster as well um, as you saw in the, the maps that I sent, there are none in our area that have 100 Mbps up, up and down speeds. Um, the best you can get is 25 one way and 3 Mbps the other way. And uh, a good portion of our town doesn't even have that. And as we saw with so many people needing to work from home or do schoolwork for, or teaching from home, um, those speeds are just a, there's total inequality in the town for the students and, and the employees and employers, and B, um, those speeds, I don't know about your household, but in our household, if somebody's doing uh, a Zoom meeting or having to upload a big file and, and we're paying for the higher speed, um, we all sort of have to shut down all the other devices in the house to make that work without uh, 
you know, and keep it a stable connection. So the, the goal is to be able to expand broadband in our area and also increase the speeds. And a lot of the communication union districts also um, make one of their goals um, to make sure there is more equality so that those that can't afford the broadband, um, that, that there's something built in so they can. Um, the, the communication union district that's starting in our region is just starting. So there is no bylaws or, or mission or any of that yet. There's been a lot of discussion, but we're sort of waiting on that legislation. Did that answer your question? It does. Okay. Do you have any other questions? Uh, Representative Molly, I understand, but there's so many different providers of internet service. How how is that delivered? Or what the focus for this they call them cut? Who is the community is addressing acronym, but um, how would the cut influence that to all providers? I'm sorry, could you say that again? I've not got a good phone connection, how, I guess. How does uh, a communication union district influence uh, all the other providers that provide broadband? I don't know that I know that question. Tasha, do you know the answer to that? Or is Leah on the line? I am on the line. This is Leah, um, and I can um, speak to that. Um, communications union district can choose several op operating models or consider several operating models uh, for how they want to be in the broadband picture. Virtually all of those models include um, level of cooperation with internet service providers. The CUDs are a municipality and by statute they are charged with pursuing um, the improvements to the communications plan, meaning the infrastructure, but the way they choose or they can do so can be either be a owner operator, either they can enter into a public private partnership with internet service providers, or they can simply contract for service with um, internet service providers. Some advantages of the earlier two models that I've mentioned is that in the scenarios where a CUD is an owner operator or has a public private partnership, um, the consideration is of uh, the ownership of assets. And in those two models, uh, at least in the first one, the CUD would own the infrastructure and therefore it can assure that uh, the, the, the infrastructure has an open access and internet service providers, various internet service providers can participate in wanting access to the infrastructure. In the later model where a CUD would be contracting with a provider, uh, the ownership of the infrastructure could very likely belong to the provider, but the CUD would be providing value um, to that partnership by having an opportunity to raise funding um, to just do community outreach but i would just to, to bring it down to the very basics is that you know the, the undertaken is tremendous for a communications union district so the districts will have to establish partnerships whether it's with isps or uh, with entities like electric utilities And what I Thank see you, here is that there's no cost. That there's no cost to the town. There is no cost to the town. The legislation uh, specifically stipulates that uh, the communications union districts are prohibited from uh, using taxpayer money for the build out, which is one reason why this concept has been fairly popular in Vermont because uh, it allows the select boards to appoint a representative. But then beyond that connection, uh, there is really no financial relationship uh, in terms of the taxes or even if the communications union district defaults. Um, the CUDs have their own revenue streams that are, or, or th their own fundraising streams that are permitted by the statutes. They can be revenue bonds 
Um, there are now fairly um, accessible VEDA loans that are available to internet service providers as well as CUDs. Um, the CUD can raise money by uh, issuing promissory notes, applying for grants. So, in short, they have access to other funding streams than uh, the taxpayer resources or, or general obligation municipal bonds, but they're not, which they are not allowed to use. That sounds good. So, assuming that this bill passes in the Senate, and get signed by the governor, then you would come back to us and ask us to join? Yes, that's what I have in mind. Okay. And I, I, uh, as I said in my memo, you would need to appoint somebody to the CUD. If, if nobody else is interested, I'd be happy to step up and be that person. But um, yeah, we'd, we'd be coming back to you hopefully very soon. I think the legislation is looking good. Be careful what you volunteer for, Jane. I know. I, I know. <laughs> well, that sounds good. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you for the uh, all the info. That sounds really good. So you'll get back to it? Yes, we'll let you know as soon as we hear something. That's great. Uh, could I just add something very briefly? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one of the things that the towns have been doing is to be setting up the exact process on how to make that happen. So they are working to form, uh, there, is, there needs to be a unified motion for making the, to form the district or join one. And there also is going to be a recommendation for a select board resolution that would appoint the representatives to the CUD. So are you asking for us to make that resolution now? No, no, I'm not asking. I'm just saying that these will be some of the resource materials for you to have on hand should you decide to proceed that way. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time for this. We appreciate it. Thanks for presenting. Thank you, thanks, yeah. Leah, and thanks, thanks, Jane. Jane, Leah, Tasha, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. <clears throat> Next, review and approve the Valcor Farm Conservation Easement. I'm going to, we can defer to Ron if we'd like. You're on, Ron. I'm on? You're on. It's you, Ron. Uh, this came before the uh, Morristown Conservation Commission uh, a month ago, and uh, my group was very excited. That, this uh, proposal to um, <coughs> conserve the uh, land, Dalcor farmland, most of it, um, from future development, and will stay in the farming uh, mode. This is one of the last. I think there's only two farms left now on the Randolph Road. And uh, <coughs> back in 1950, when I was a young man, there was farms all the way to the line to uh, the Morseville village. So basically, uh, the land trust is involved somewhat, but it's primarily the Vermont land trust. And they're just looking for the Morristown uh, Select Board to approve of their goal to conserve this land. Have any questions for Ron? No, I'm I'm really impressed. I'm glad to see that that's going to be conserved. Yeah. Hey Ron, I got I got a question. Um, on that 9.8 acres to be retained. Looks what? Like 130 acres. There's some land that is kept out for the family that they can build on it. Uh, if you're looking at the. Uh, I look at it. The map. <clears throat> that long skinny strip there. Yeah. In the middle. Yeah. Um, this side, like this L. Yeah. Yeah. That's con that's not in the confidential. I understand that, that, but what what's the reason for it, and what are the dimensions on that thing? It's it's hard to tell. Uh, in the letter, it had, well, it has the. Uh, <clears throat> 
to have the acreages in the. I understand that, but I don't. How are you going to access, or how is anybody going to access that? Uh, LC? Yeah. Borders the Randolph Road. Well, some of it does. But you get a long, narrow piece. That's why I was wondering what Look the narrow there, but out in the field, look wider. <laughs> if you drive out yeah, there. What, what are the dimensions of the thing? Do you have any idea? No. I it's don't. hard to tell here, scale is 1 to 8,000. So I think it's like this, 500 this is people plan, This is the plan that the Valcor people have come up with, with, with the trust people. This is a, and nothing to do with my committee. No, no, I'm, I'm not saying that it is. I'm just wondering as far as uh, like zoning in the future, what, is, what are the sizes of that? And how is it going to be able to be accessed? At, you don't know the dimensions, I'm just... No. You can't create an illegal piece of property, that's all. I wonder if, it, if you had it set up so I had an access road. It looks like that skinny strip's about three to 400 feet wide there. I know the one, one where it is. If you had an access road, it would be a... It is quite wide. If you, yeah. you take, I've drove out there, it's out there. paid now, and uh, it's wide enough for an access road yeah. and, and lots. And, uh, the total, I don't, 9.8 acres is considered to be right, reserved. I, yeah. Plus, there's the other house sites that are yeah, no, I understand. also. Yeah, I can see the ones yeah. there. But overall, uh, uh, <laughs> I just think uh, it's, it's um, a nice thing, similar to how we protected Brownsville last year and so. Uh, this is farmed, and I uh, believe it's more who has been farming it. Uh, history wise, it was before Valcor, it was the Allen farm, and Frank Allen. But, Have they already sold it? Is someone else farming it now? Uh, I think he's there now, and this um, is still going on. They're, this month, they're going to the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board mm -hmm. to get um, lined up for funds from them too, possibly. I think that's important because this is just an application then for, for a loan for them to buy a property. The property has not transferred yet. So, so this is really, to your question, was a letter to make sure that the things that they were going to do was compliant with them. Mm. The reason why this is going to stop and the Royal County Planning Commission to make sure it meets town plans. So it's, you know, it's, it's a loan application for somebody that wants to buy this in, in turn for going into a trust to get funding and buy the land that will be conserved. So it's still in that loan process of as of this time. So, so they're just asking for our support. Basically, you know, and I don't know because this is the only correspondence that I've really seen on it. And I think sometimes these things come to the select board. I think we've seen it before after everything in the funding is approved for an actual the select board agrees to it says, yes, this is, this is fine. We don't have a problem with it, which is usually the case. But I think at this point in time, this is still in the funding stage. Right. So it hasn't been funded yet. I see Gary's point, though. Is that, is that you're yeah. understanding the same? So this hasn't been funded right. yet. It, it has to go before um, Developmental Review Board. Yes. No, no, so no, planning? No, it has to go through to the zoning and conservation board at the state level. It so that the people that want to buy the land, part of the purchase of it, is to use that funding to be able to buy the land and send it to the server. Okay. So it's, it's still in that application process. Doesn't have to come before our planning commission. I mean, no, but the zoning. I mean, no. I no? think that's, it has to go through. You know, I think Todd has it because it would be reviewed, just like a review to see if it's in accordance with the town plan. Okay. Um, and which, what? You know, I, I think that it is from from everything. It's it's rural residential land. I don't see any issues like that. It's not land that would be um, developed for industrial purposes. It's not zoning from a zoning point of view. I don't see any problems with the zoning per se. I think, and that's really what they've asked. If you see the problem with the zoning or with the, the town plan or with the zoning, the answer is no. You know, it's not like we did have one piece of property that we came to you several years ago that was 
those zones, it could be resolved very easily. It could have impacted you know, our RAM would stop to be able to do that. So, but this particular thing is, is a loan application through the MA conservation board to provide these easements and that help the people buy the farm and that farm is going to go out. So that's that's my understanding. Am I right on that? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? So basically you're looking for the board to um, approve is the wrong word. Or rather to Vermont Land Trust to and the local property to be the sole land trust of the flood board. Letter of support. Approve this, uh, yeah, letter of support. support. Yeah. Okay. And down here there's a state of the action of the board. <laughs> yeah. I'm fine with it. I, I like Gary's point though that that one strip of land, you know, it's kind of a spaghetti strip. It would have to have designed in some sort of access road if it was going to be built into multiple house lots. But either that would be kind of weird. But maybe the just maybe the house across the street they're allowing that those people yeah, to still one farm is, it. Yeah, it's a much, much smaller. I know yeah. that. That's careful. Anyways, what do you guys think? I don't know. Does someone want to make a motion? I have a motion that the board uh, write a letter of support. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Thank you. Thanks, You're Ron. Welcome. Thanks, Thanks Ron. for coming in tonight. I'll see you this up. You do that. Next one. Oh, this is a sketchy one. Yeah. I know. Approve the fireworks permit for 1296 Washington Highway. I don't know. Have you seen this, Denny? I was contacted personally. No problem. No problem. <clears throat> Richard? Richard? Next door? Pretty close to your house and we launch them that way. Yeah. <laughs> Do I hear a motion? Make a motion we approve. Second. Can we all come over here? <laughs> if I'm there. If we still have any distance, then no. This is going to be just the backup slide, actually. The family has some gathering on our property in Johnson. We're really getting a permit from Johnson. I like it that the rain date is before the actual date. That's interesting. <laughs> That's exactly right. We can't do it on the fourth, but the day before it's better. That's over. <laughs> okay. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. <clears throat> Next, approve the fireworks permit for 1700 Cades Falls Road. How about this one, Danny? Been contacted direct and no problem. Rich? No issues. Do I hear a motion? Make a motion for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, write off ambulance calls for fiscal year 18 and 19. Do you want to speak to that, Paula? Uh, just, just a standard um, thing every year. It is, you know, it's not like the whole point of the do you know how that how that uh, measures up to like previous years? Do you know, Bill? Uh, no, I don't. This is actually the the, the fiscal year right before it started. Right. Um, what it's a uh, it's consistent. Yeah. Doesn't seem like it's that much. It's, it's, it's only right around this amount. It's, it's yeah, it's, and it's 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 a percentage that's fairly standard. Along when I look at other EMS agencies, um, our our private colleagues, our private service colleagues, uh, you know, they, they are much more aggressive about this than, than we need to be. Mm -hmm. um, I think what's important here is that we look, uh, that one, uh, in, when I talked to Tina in the past about it, uh, we have no real, what we call insurance pay, pay, patient problems. Mm -hmm. These IPPs are people who, who get ambulance service to check from their insurance.
insurer goes directly to them, and then they never pay us. Uh, those people have a very low tolerance for because that, that's essentially theft of service at that point. They, they've gotten a check that was supposed to come to us. Um, and in conversation with Tina in the past, we, we have little to no IPP issues in the past. Um, so that leaves us with this other balance here of 27,000, uh, which I think just to put it all in perspective, since it did come up at town meeting, that uh, that 27,000 to me, that represents uh, the people for which we are really the last resort. They are the uninsured, the underinsured, uh, the people who are, uh, we are not just taking them to health care, we are health care for them. Um, so I think putting it in that perspective, that this number is, is truly the service part of what we do. The people who really need it. Yeah. All right. Do I hear motion? Make a motion. We write off twenty-seven thousand seven hundred eighty-five dollars and sixty-nine cents. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. <clears throat> Number six: Approved dispatch agreement with Lamoille County Sheriff's Department. This is just our standard you know, to start by the approach and dispatch. Okay. Yeah. Make a motion, we approve it. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Is that an increase? Yeah. It went up a little. Yeah. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Uh, just authorize me to sign the court, please. Yes. That was in the motion. Yeah. <laughs> I say all in favor say aye. Aye. Any votes? Motion is passed. Next, approve the tax anticipation note. Is it? Yes, yeah, we got the. Is it like that? Yep. Okay. Yeah, we have it. So I sent out four bids. Um, I only got two back. My recommendation is to stay with the union back because um, their rate is lower and they um, pay they pay interest on our home loans, not just the portion above it, and so we'll make more back. So financially, it makes the most sense. Okay. Do I hear a motion regarding this? I think we'll move to the union bank. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? I'm, I'm thinking that they're doing everything digital based on what we did for the school. You'll probably get an email from them that you will need to electronically sign documents versus physically sign documents. How do you do that? Yeah, I know how to do it. You click the box. Yeah. Okay. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Sign the certificate of land swap with RK Mile. This is one that worked for several years ago. Yeah. The ministry when the motion at that point in time are there. Finally get around to getting all the, the transfers done. And the attorney referencing RK Mile on the certificate from the spike board return. Yeah, I remember that. Those are the minutes from January 14, 2019. I mean, some of you weren't on the board at that time, so I figured we'd put the minutes in there. Once again, this, this piece of land that we're picking up is kind of anticipation of the future with the easement along the rail trail becomes available and we'll be able to uh, obtain that easement and, and have a bigger chunk of property to provide better access to the rail trail down in that area. Just cleans it up for us and them. Yes, exactly. It, it doesn't hurt us any on the off go piece of it. It doesn't impact anything that went there. But it's got max to expand operation. We've got a lot down there already. Do we need a motion for it? We already did it. You, you need to make a motion that you're approving that certificate, please. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve it. 
I have a motion. Second. And a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion's passed. <clears throat> Number nine, review and approve the local emergency management plan. This is a local, you know, local emergency management plan that we have approved every year after the town meeting. We've got to put a little more on because it's just something that I think really wants more to be applied out with ADD stop back June 30th, 
and the 20th. I nominate Bob. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? You're going to be around. I am. Not going anywhere this summer. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So passed. <clears throat> Number 12, discuss outdoor seating for El Toro and Thompson's Bakery. Tristan did not work with the restaurants. We want to do the same thing on two parking spaces, um, like we're doing across the street. We close it with the uh, Jersey Barriers just to give them some more outside seating so that they can continue to operate. So we'd like to do the same thing on the other side of the street. That's the case. When, when are you going to do the one Kevin, I know Trish is working with you when you she was just got that go and they're gone. Okay. That's the Jersey Bear sitting on the trail right now. So just wait for me to have a few guys. <laughs> if you say yes tonight, they'll be they could be there tomorrow. Is there plenty of room? All right. Kind of like Well, we're gonna keep them just to the outside with the white lines, the parking spaces that are now. Mm -hmm. So that still leaves us plenty of space between there and the yellow one. So we use a big truck because we shouldn't have any issues going on. What do you think, Richard? Uh, well, they'd be pretty visible at night. Or should there be like reflector flags or reflectors or something on them? I mean, Trish was saying she was going to paint them. I don't know what she's going to paint them. What color? But there are street lights right there. Because the people aren't used to having that. I'm just curious. But I think the traffic's been less, hasn't it? No. It was for a while. No, it's up. Pick it up again. I mean, if it's a problem, I don't want to take them out. Right. Yeah. Right. It's pretty easy to take them out. I also want to say El Toro is not spelled correctly. I don't know if that matters on your agenda, but it's only one R, not two, I believe. Denny, has you your hand up, Denny? Denny. As long as we got nine feet between two cars fighting against security batteries, we'll be good. And to answer your question, you can light them and everything else, you still have full tires on them. <laughs> it's just the nature of the beast. Just gives them something to aim at that light. Great <laughs> enough. There's been one in a lot of the farm was the 15 towards Volta. They played ricochet like a pinball, I think. There's been one in front of Linda them to do. 20 years <laughs> but as long as we have enough, I don't know what width of the road, but if we're coming down with the engine, engine one or the ladder, we just want to figure it might be if we happen to catch it where we got two cars in both directions. Whatever. That's the light part of the street in there. I mean, the, the animal park needs to care about it. It should be staggered anyway, right? Yeah, there'd be different plans there. So do we need a motion for this? Yes, please. Just do I have one? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. Old business. Review the summer paving project. So we did get an estimate more last time talked about all the work. Munson Avenue and Harold, yeah, Harold Street um, in that area. We kind of got a, just a, a, a budget estimate to full plane rebuild a couple of those roads out there. Just a reminder, you have about $270,000. Um, just be aware, paving is not an exact bid just because, you you know, it's it's bid. It's based on the time. Sometimes you be over time, sometimes you'll be under time. So, the other roads that we talked about, of course, were um, North Town Corner Road, Space Coast Road. I think that was full, uh, almost a little over a mile and three quarters. Mile and three quarters for those two roads. So the, the reality of it is, is, you don't have enough money to do everything that we talked about. So it, it's really up to you to figure out what you want to put out. And if you look at the asphalt price, seventy dollars a ton, um, and, and actually uh, Pike called me last week and. Since they're working here, they want to see a bid from us because it's handy work for them that they're close in. Once again, this is not a bid, and that's enough for us for you guys to make a decision on and understand um, you know, what you have budget wise and cost and approximate cost wise. But 
these prices could change around once they go up a bit. You never know, but it's a budget that was more important. And, we, and the, the road that we can't do is the stagecoach. Is that what you're saying? Well, we talked about the other section of stagecoach from Morristown Corners, Katie's Falls. Kevin, how long was that? Uh, mile and a quarter. Mile and a quarter. So, once again, I've always budgeted roughly $100,000 a mile in that, that price range. So, that would be, just for budget purposes, $125,000. And then Morristown Corners Road, Kevin, was like Katie's Falls? It was uh, six cents a mile. Six cents a mile, or about $60,000. I would recommend, you know, if you're looking at $270,000, you're right on what you have available. That could easily go over, mm -hmm. you know, budget on something like what you're doing there. Because once again, asphalt is not going to be exact. It's, it can vary in the amount of time. So. I like the idea of doing, doing those roads on that end of town. And I, after we talked about it, I drove Harold Street and, and all the way to 15. That's bad. And uh, Munson Avenue has been bad in Northgate. But the question Brian brought up was uh, who has ownership of Northgate Ave? And maybe you would explain that to Brian or Brian yeah. heard that. Yeah, I you know, we've asked to research this uh, maybe a year ago or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah about a year ago. So, so I went back and looked through the records. The site board did everything that they needed to do as far as the road acceptance practice. They, they had the on-site hearing, they made the most of it, it's all that and that and Sarah told it for me. So they went through the process um, and they accepted that road as a town road. The title was never turned over to the town. However, the select board decision to accept that as a town road was never appealed. So in, in my view, the town's paved or plowed to maintain that road for years. Um, and I think if you read any court cases or statute, that makes it a town road, whether there's a deed to it or title to it or not, because you've done it, you know, every through thing, you really took it by a uh, due process. <laughs> well, due process, but you, you went through the uh, eminent domain. Eminent domain kind of process, you know, that you, you took over that road. Nobody accepted it at the time, they all had their appeal rights. But nobody appealed the decision of the town to take it over. And you probably find lots of roads out there that we do not have needs on. That's why I'm very particular now when you're doing that, that yeah, everybody agrees that you're going to. Yeah, I know Brian was concerned because we didn't want to do a lot of work on it unless we, we have we own it. What if we own it? I was off right. I know we were plowing in. I agree with that, but I just want to make sure we weren't putting the road uh, money into a road that wasn't ours. Just, uh, mm -hmm. Because there was no deed. I know when we went out on another road, we were talking to taking the <coughs> We told them we had to have a deed. So I want to make sure there was one. Right. There's not. There's not a deed. However, there was select board proceedings that were on record. Okay. That's good. You call that adverse possession? Yeah. Yep, yeah, that's right. Or squatter's right. <laughs> small 
creeks or that you want to do out there and in the North area at the same time? Well, I advocate a little bit from the state structure within the town. With the pavement going on, we're going on here. State structure is seeing a significant increase in traffic. You know, so it's not a one year project, but they're going to finish it next year with a finish hill on 100. So we've got traffic being diverted on the state structure. The two sections we discussed are being. We're going to see more traffic on those sections over the next few years. They aren't going to get back. So I'm going to suggest that perhaps we take a look at sections of those roads. If we're looking at burning up some paving money on small side streets, I suggest that you look at those two areas and do some repair in the worst areas. I know moving equipment costs money, and that could be a piece of our budget. But the corner, from the corner by Mac Miller Road down to the bridge is just terrible. And there's sections from the store out to Katie's Falls Road on the straight, straight away that are, are equally as bad. And if we completely neglect that side of town and increase traffic flow, I don't know, but they just uh, maybe we need to at least consider, consider that us portion of town. Yeah, that's a good point. The other thing with that, though, we don't want to have construction going on on both roads at the same time. You know, that's another thing to think about. They'll be all on Randolph Road and not be broken up. It's a feeling also on the north end, you get a pretty good sized tax base so that you're catering to out there. Well, that's uh, what I was thinking. There's a lot of big trucks. With uh, very good services required other than the highway. But I think Katie's Falls and uh, that needs to be done. Mac Miller does. Just which one you're going to do first. Now that I think about it, maybe we don't want to be paving that with all this traffic going down there right now. You know, we're going to have people. We are going to pave on both those, those spur roads at the same time. The traffic can go either one way or the other. Where we are. If, we were, if we were to pave a section yeah. of the stage coach or the. Is that North Bridge Road? Is that that call up through there? Yeah, North Bridge. I mean, it's not like we're going to. The traffic would still have a way to get to a paved highway. No paved falls road. I just, I think we should consider it. At least not in entirety, at least uh, taking some fast spots and can we take a look and identify strips of it that uh, need more work or, or need more drilling in the town. Kevin, the first quarter mile of the space good for any portion of the rest of it, or is it the main approach down the line? Like, it's pretty much the whole, I mean, that whole section is pretty much about the main. I mean, it's really bad right after you leave the store or the last corner of the town, you get past the bridge for you. It gets a little better, but that section in through there is still worse. The rest of those deteriorating just to try to trap. Uh, the more down the other, down to class uh, Mac Miller side, we've got I've got a lot of ditch work to get done before we start paving down through there. So that would be a, a little bit of a process to get that ready for the paving. But we don't have to decide tonight anyway, right? Yeah, I need to put out an RFP. Yeah, so okay. I, I need to get something out. Um, this, this estimate, is that, is that the whole length of Harold Street? It is. And the whole length of Harold Street. And the whole length of Harold Street. Okay, so could if that's that around be, 210, so we yeah, it could be cut back on Munson, I would think. You know, it could, uh, I mean, it's maybe 100 feet north of North Cape Plaza. Where the last pavement was done. Yeah, somewhere. There's a pretty distinctive line there. That oh, yeah. And they're up to 15. There's yeah. quite a section there that is good. Is good. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could start there. Maybe, you know, and maybe and use the balance. The balance to, to fix to, uh, Mac Miller a little bit. Yeah, Mac Miller corner. That, that, I agree. That's terrible. There. That bridge is. Yeah. I just guess maybe you talk to Pike while they're paving the but they're in the construction signs are on the other side of the bridge. <laughs> We're looking at the bridge and they need more work on that bridge. Probably, but yeah. well, that, that should be ground built yeah. off. Yeah. The bridge is solid, but the deck's bad, right? Well, yeah, the deck's got some spots in it that we've we identified. We have to have title and gas for it. We, we have title and gas for it, so we can <laughs> get a better recommendation to the board on what needs to be done. Well, I some dynamite in my fireworks permit. I'll take care of the bridge for you. Right. Well, I remember not too long ago, Minn Cody had looked at that bridge yeah, and yeah. structurally it was sound, but it was 
going to need new debt. That's why I said that. It's going to need a new debt. It's going to need a new debt. And we've known that for a long time. Right. I mean, that's how it's priced in by the other So why do I put together this? We'll, we'll cut it short. We'll, we'll stop there with that pipeline line is, um, which maybe will save us $10,000. And then maybe do like a quarter mile something like that um, for the worst case of space coaching and get past the nursery. Now that we solve some of the problems out there. And that's going to be pretty basically the money that you have. How does that sound, Eric? Yeah, I, I think that's a great compliment. Yeah. Uh, I don't, the Carroll Street we talked about getting it out to an industrial park. Yeah. That's the majority of the truck traffic. Right. The road is the most. So I don't know. Do we need to do all the way up to Route 15 on Carroll Street? Well, it's really bad. <laughs> I was thinking, I think from Brooklyn, and it's not good for you, to, to, to Munson is actually in pretty good shape on, on Harold Street. Because we retrieved that not too long ago. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> of course, with truck trip. Yeah. Found it. Hell yeah. yeah. I, don't know. I was thinking that, and I went and drove it after the last meeting. And uh, no, so we did this. It's worth some money. Yeah, we're gonna be there. We should. But then I went to the state coast too. And that's bad. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I know they're all bad. But I I didn't know Harold was that bad. You know, uh, east of Poole Avenue, but it's really bad. And a lot of big trucks do use that too. They come in from 15. You know, that way. I like the idea of using, you know, doing a compromise, using a balance. Whatever we have left over, we put the stage coach through that way. How does that sound, Judy? Sounds good. You, Gary? Yeah. I mean, you could go Harrow Street up to Cool Avenue, actually, if you're an animal, if you want it. You know, it has the rest of that. Danny. It's going to be more expensive to come back. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, won't you? Do? Yeah, we're going to do it. Oh, you're right. Yeah, we're going to do it. I'm going finish in a row. <laughs> right. Uh, sort of I'm on Harold Street all the time. From Harold Street, right? So you're the one that broke it up. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but you keep talking part roads. You've got money to do Harold Street from start to finish, get it done. So I agree. You know, don't go to same more part where up, up Munson Avenue where that's been uh, repaved right in front of me and over there, basically. From, right. From there to. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, no, that's, that's not bad. But don't stop right. Harold Street before it gets to blown coke. Yeah. I mean, you got to do it. Do the whole, whole thing. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of truth to that because what happens is then you end up a section that's a couple hundred feet long that you have to come back and do in a couple of years to bring it up. So I, I would say if we're going to do months and we might go through all of those things. things. Um, and that way you're not going back. You've got part of it. You've got Two to three hundred feet is starting to break up on you the rest of the time, but that two hundred, three hundred feet is going to be really expensive to do now. Um, I agree. So I say, you know, unless you're redoing for a while, I don't think we've been out there probably since I started here. I think that was my first day we thought that we did like that whole section. I would do all of it. It's done. Because once you start moving the paper, moving around all the time, it gets more and more expensive. Uh, it gets harder to pay me to me to pay a little bit. So if we're going to be out there, I agree. It all, and then we'll figure out a balance and do some of the stage to help keep that end out there from the corner on down towards the nursery. I mean, that price for paving, you better take advantage of all the things. The low price, <laughs> yeah. It is. Well, yeah. That's how it is. That's just the I understand, price. but still, I mean, it's a that's an easy good price. That's where they're at I right now. I was wondering if it was. <laughs> that was just the price of the asphalt. So does someone want to put together a motion? I don't necessarily you don't need as long as everybody understands what I'm going to put out. Okay. I have no idea what we're doing. You'll get a chance to come back and prove it okay. once I get back here. That sounds good. All right, next, to prove warrants. Do I hear a motion? You're calling down the job today. I'm sorry. <laughs> have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. <clears throat> PA report. Um, 
So right at those zone, and we did get our show water permit back for the pit. The one that's more little chat box out there. We still don't have anything back back to it yet on what the next step will be, but getting your storm water permit in place is a nice step to have done. Um Kevin's gonna have some testing to do out there on some rain that's still be the first year, but nice step to have done it out of the way. So the, it's nice to have that done for you for that. Um we have a retirement ceremony Wednesday or we're gathering. Well yeah, Wednesday we have a little gathering. A little gathering. Um mm -hmm. fishing day for yeah, fishing games for the police officer. And then Thursday we have uh, the um, I sent out an email to everybody last week on yeah. that. Um about the hybrid drive starting at noon. So um two employees here before the end of June. Um, just need to check with Bob and Gary. Um, the bid opening will be coming in. We're going to do the, the bid opening for the call installation here on Thursday at 2. I don't know if you guys want to be here or not. We're not going to do acceptance at this at that point in time. We're going to open up for the public at this point in time. But I need to schedule a time with you guys on the 22nd to come in and reveal and potentially award the contract. And Erica, I'll run a work um, form that as a meeting. Um, because you guys did appoint kind of a little subcommittee to do that. And I want to make sure that the contractors, if they want to come to that discussion, then they can be here for that too, so everybody knows. Yeah, that can be here. So, any time? Good afternoon? Afternoon. One o'clock? Two would be better. Two o'clock? Yeah. What, what date did you say? It's 22nd. 22nd. Two o'clock, you said? Yeah. yeah. I'll let um, Tyler know that we'll, you guys will be here. He'll come back with, and review all the bids to make the recommendations and people will work that contract. Okay. And that's all I have. Is that it? Give me a first second here. I'm going to close. Is our next meeting going to be July 6th? Yes. I probably won't be here. Okay. Is everyone else going to be here? All right. Any questions for Dan? Thanks, Dan. Select board concerns. Gary. Can't think of any. Judy? I'd like to thank the chief for. Um, Signing the, I don't know if it was a resolution or whatever he signed. It was in the paper after our last uh, select board meeting. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I, I appreciate I that. that so, yeah. yeah, but you you were mentioned in there, so that I I appreciate that yeah. representing the town. And um, I'd like to thank Bill Makes because of the food drop off we had here in Loyal County was based was due to Bill bringing it to our attention. And if it hadn't been for him, I don't think we would have had a food drop in the Loyola County. So thank you very much. I'm sure a lot of residents are thanking you for that too. Kudos, Bill. Brian. Okay, I'll start out with a good thing first. I'd like to thank whoever was involved with our little thing. I don't know. My thanks for letting me know that. I don't know. My mom, it was my mom organized it. That was very, very nice. I'm glad that happened. Everybody. I have an email out to the um, governor's office about the flags I did not heard about. Okay. Okay. So that was a good, was quite a few people in there, fire truck and stuff. And I guess we have some cemetery problems. I went up today, Dennis called me last night, wanted me to go on my way to work. <coughs> he said it's been over two weeks since the moor's been there. And I got pictures. Okay. And it's Tall grass. Somebody, some of the people have gone and mowed their own lawns. I don't know what's happening. No. Is it a different outfit? It's doing it, it now? is a different outfit. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's tough for us to keep the you know, We got to bid. That's the reason why I always like the cemetery association to do it. Oh, yeah. Um, because, you know, I it's they were the ones that always out there checking the cemeteries and we don't really have anybody that, that can go out there and check that. Like, <coughs> so that's just one of the problems we've had since they don't want to do the work anymore. Yeah, I don't know if they, <coughs> if they had been there 
there to tell anybody but uh, or what went on, but I I guess for sure the one in March has been over two weeks going on the third week. And they're supposed to mow it every two weeks, right? Every two weeks. Why don't I do this? I'll get with the contractor and then have him just email me a schedule of when what days he's coming to be mowing water on. Realizing that rain can throw that off too. You to a certain degree or letter or whatever. And then that way he can tell me what days he's out there going on so that I can keep a little bit better track of that. Um, but often what I really think that the Secretary of Association is trying to take that back out. So I think it works better than we're, we're having a meeting yeah. Yeah. When, when they were managing the contract. Yeah. And I'll talk to them. Because there is another issue too. <coughs> I think Jane gets pretty fed up of when she's quitting um, because of the film uh, home, trying to get the money and the paperwork, and I know what's going on there. So, uh, just want to bring it to your attention. And we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna supposed to have a meeting in the next few months. Okay. Okay, Brian. Eric. Oh, I had something. I remember uh, the, the where the rail trail crosses Brooklyn Street. Is there uh, a possibility we could apply for a grant like this flashing light cross? It was nice to see that pedestrian flapper thing, but it's very dangerous and you know low light. People just walk right out there and they don't. They think oh, it's a crosswalk, but people don't really think that. I saw a person almost get hit, and then. The other day, I was going to work in the morning, and somebody was in a, all dressed in black. I came around the corner at four in the morning, almost hit a guy right there. And I'm like, whoa, not that somebody like that would push the button and wait, but, uh, <laughs> but I've had a few people say, you know, if you had a strobe system there with a uh, solar panel or whatever, that is a wicked dangerous spot. <laughs> we can look at I've never seen any. That doesn't mean that they're not out there. Um, right. I think those were right around. The one we put out probably around forty-two, forty-five hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, but if you can find grant there, I think it's potentially fine to do that. Quite a few people have commented the one just by the the uh, senior center. You know, they like it. I mean, some people don't like it because of a lot of reasons, but I think it does more good than bad. It raises awareness. You know, even when they're not flashing. They're just, they're just expensive to install. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we'll look to if you find any grant. If not, I'll let you know. And then you guys. Um, potentially, if you want to, you can pick it up by the end. Yeah. Might okay, so be able to, uh, because they're, it's in the legislature right now, uh, in the Senate, uh, in Dublin's, I think. Uh, they're proposing to complete the rail trail in two years. And there may be some money there. Like that. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe I'll have to cover some stuff there. Because uh, I know uh, Bash will maintain it here around, but the major stuff, uh, DOT has to yeah. take care of. Yeah. yeah. It might be. Because uh, I, I almost had a guy there the other day. It was right in the middle of the day. Right. They just walk right out. We'll just walk right out. <laughs> and some people will be good. They're waiting with their bike, and yeah. people don't stop to just keep going, keep going. Yeah. But that flapper you put up is good, you know, the pedestrian marker. But I think it needs more than that. It's yeah. really. Was this one put in half town, half village? We had a donation yeah. that pays for half this. I think the village pays for half of it, and then we pay for half of it. So a quarter and a quarter. So there was a donation for half. The other thing with that crossing is people go faster coming down anyway, right. and really going going up. Another thing is the brush doesn't get cut back far enough either on those corners. Yeah, and, yeah. And it's really a bad spot there. Mm -hmm. It is. All right, and that's all I had. Next, is there any other business? I just wanted to say thank you to Jenny and the police and, and um, 
gratitude to everybody for the parade, for the graduates. Um, it was wonderful. All the feedback I'm getting from the community was that they loved it, that they felt um, it was really well done. They loved being a part of celebrating um, the seniors, and they loved for it to happen, and they keep telling me to express thank you. Everybody. Yeah, everybody. And my granddaughter was, and she said this, by far, beat the regular graduation. And, uh, <laughs> wow. And she said it was really. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Sunday. And I know it was in fire department sanction and I was not putting a truck in. My guys were able, my people were able to go if they choose in their personal vehicles. I know what our little wishes were. I had no way of really putting out the communication unless I called it. Cindy knew I could give her two names, two email addresses. It would hit all of mutual aid and hit Vermont State Firefighters Association. Never went nowhere. I appreciate what Linda put together, but I also know what's coming down the road. Once the governor ever decides to let people make their own decisions and open the state back up, we are going to be doing a firefighter function. Because of his involvement in the fire department, it's going to be a celebration of life. So just so you're clarified, you weren't left out. Nobody was in this room. About everybody here probably knew our law. So this is what we were up against as the two departments that he was a part of in Memorial County. Well, I want to apologize to you because uh, as of tonight, I didn't have your phone number. I was sitting there reading my paperwork at home, and when I did, I said it was on there two different numbers. Because I was going to call you Sunday. First of all, I couldn't find what you sent me. I could not find it. Me? Yeah. I didn't send out anything from the town. I posted a copy of my mom's personal Facebook message on my personal Facebook. So you didn't get anything from me. The only way you would have done it, you told me. I mean, it was from. No, it looked I like posted it on my Facebook. But I page. couldn't find it, so I'm trying to make sure I was going to go. Unless you were on, I think it's Wolf Cuts front porch. Front porch. Front porch. Yeah. You would have had to go on the Facebook. Yeah. It was on there. That's where I saw it. Yeah. And, you know, it just, it is what it is. It was what it was. I mean, we wanted to do it, right? But we also want to respect his wishes. Of course. And my thoughts were, I mean, again, I was with him for a long time, too. Uh, about the world that man. And like I said, I want to try to do what we can. And that's when we decided to try to get the fight uh, at half mass. I don't know if we can or not. And that's what we're trying to do. Well, you may be a day late and all the short. Because if you've gone through the mutual aid, the mutual aid has contacts that go from when he passed to a certain time if he was an active or if he was a retired member. I don't know if you can do it now being so far after the fact. Jimmy had to call me to find out. Because I got a text. Dad passed away this morning is the maximum running. What am I to do? Yeah. You know, I mean, I've apologized an awful lot over this to different groups because I feel it's right. Did I do anything wrong? Not really. Because the family was taken care of. We were lucky. I was able to bring him and Matt up in the 24. to the cemetery. All of a sudden. So, but that's kind of the down and dirty. I mean, it wasn't up to us. He taught me an awful lot, just like he did you. He's still teaching every time I teach somebody how to pump. They're learning how to pump. Carlo taught me how to drive the 24. I mean, just like with you, Brian, you know what I mean? He was there when we were members. You know, Mike's worked with him on the truck. So, you know, I mean, it wasn't an easy thing. But it is what it was.
Well, it sounds like you honor the wishes anyway. Yeah, like think of it that way. He did honor his wishes, and Cindy really had to fight to get the 24 involved. You know, and I wasn't pushing, I, I dealt with this not too long ago. I wasn't going through that. Yeah. Thanks, Danny. Is there any other business? I move that we enter executive session to discuss appointment for employment of public officer and administrative contracts and police chief contracts for employees who are under the provision of the title of the